was an unusually glum start to the day on the New York Stock Exchange, where it seemed the bell was tolling for stock prices. This was the scene on the big board uh, within just a few seconds. The Dow down a whopping 9.71%, and it kept on plunging. Trading on the S&P 500 was suspended after a 9% fall. Germany's benchmark DAX index fell more than 10 percent. Shares in the German blue chip index fell under the 9,000 point mark for the first time since 2016. Earlier, Asian markets also continued to drop. Tokyo's Nikkei uh, was down despite emergency monetary action by the Bank of Japan. Uh, Hong Kong and Shanghai were also trading lower. That after Chinese authorities released data showing retail sales down more than 20 percent and industrial output down by 13.5 percent. Now, among the hardest hit sectors, the tourism and travel industries. Countrywide lockdowns, travel and hospitality restrictions are already hurting the sector. Now, German travel operator TUI says it's suspending the bulk of its operations while air carriers are temporarily laying off staff. Meanwhile, an uh, airline consulting firm is warning that most airlines worldwide could be bankrupt by the end of May. The warning comes as air carriers cut jobs and seek government aid to make up for falling ticket sales and cancellations due to the COVID-19 pandemic. All right, we have our business correspondents following this story for us. Aaron Tilton is with us here in our studio, and Chelsea Delaney is over at the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. Chelsea, I want to start with you. We've heard there there are huge problems for the travel and tourism sector, and it doesn't really seem like investors are taking that this well today. No, it's been really a, a bloodbath for the for the airline industry and its shares in particular. Uh, one of the biggest losers we're seeing here in, in Frankfurt uh, on the DAX is Lufthansa, which is down about 12 to 13 percent today. So this is really um, coming after uh, also a lot of volatility over the past several weeks. A number of airlines, Lufthansa, Air France, KLM, British Airways, all of them have lost about half of their market value over over the past several weeks as the travel restrictions have started to increase and airlines are, are doing all that they can right now to really um, sort of offset these these impacts they're cutting staff they're cutting routes but uh, it is becoming increasingly likely that they're going to run out of cash at some point soon okay so it's a dramatic situation for airlines Aaron coming to you we've heard that Germany's TUI is now suspending much of its operations how bad do things look for the tourism industry? Well, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. They look bad. You really have to, to look at this in the broad perspective. I mean, this is a perfect storm for the tourism industry. Of course, tourism is based on the idea of free travel amongst countries, and we're seeing one travel restriction after the other crop up, roads being closed, airports being closed. And why don't we just stay with the airline industry? I mean, these are just some of the, the, uh, some of the headlines we've been getting in here in the last couple hours. British Airways says it's closing 75% um, of its routes in the coming weeks. Air France also the same thing, canceling 70 to 90 percent of its routes. EasyJet, same thing, 75 percent uh, of routes will be closed in April and May. And in the United States, uh, American Airlines also says that they're closing um, their international capacity by 75 percent. I mean, that's a huge blow to um, the airlines and one that it's going to be very, very difficult for them to recover from. I mean, that's why, just as Chelsea was saying there, we're seeing um, them approach government saying that they're going to need bailouts, some type of financial assistance, and then also going to their unions and saying, look, you know, they can't keep that entire staff on if they're to actually survive this um, this pandemic crisis that we're seeing right now. We were initially talking about short-term disruptions. Are these businesses really prepared for a long-term disruption? Well, that really is the big question. And, you know, with the airlines, I wouldn't be worried about it that much because it's just, I mean, they're, they're a huge industry. And just as we saw in the financial crisis, they're the type of industry that governments like to get involved with and do like to bail out and make sure that they survive because they employ so many people. What I would really be concerned with are some of the secondary and tertiary companies involved in um, tourism. So I'm talking about things like hotels, like restaurants, like small mom and pop shop, mom and pop shop rather, that are um, dependent upon tourist dollars to stay open. I mean, at that level, the margins are so thin, they really can't afford to stay closed. And each day that we remain, um, that we rem they remain closed, it increases the probability that they won't be able to open up their doors. And then there's also the fact of their employees. A lot of them are like seasonal employees. They're, they're shift workers, they're freelancers. They don't really have, um, you know, the savings that they need to be able to, to really get through a long-term break like this. Mm -hmm. And that could have a huge knock-on effect long-terms in terms of the economy once we're through this. Chelsea, what do things look like there in Frankfurt? What are traders saying about the long-term effects of this pandemic? 
Well, this is obviously in, in the next several months going to have a, a significant impact on economic growth. If we see economies grind to a halt like they did in China, like they are in Italy right now, that will really impact uh, the entire uh, economy. In the long term, investors, economists do see the economy rebounding in the next several months and by 2021, for example. Um, but in, I think this is also raising a lot of questions about the future of globalization. Is this mm -hmm. going to uh, have people um, uh, sort of coming back and uh, coming back home? But all of that's still up in the air right now. All right, our business team here, uh, Chelsea Delaney in Frankfurt and Aaron Tilton with us here in our studio. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Well, the German decision to close its borders has already ruffled some feathers here in Europe. Uh, let's go to DW correspondent Georg Mattes standing by in Brussels. Hi, Georg. Uh, French President Emmanuel Macron, he is not happy with Germany's border control measures. Tell us more about that. That's right. The French president, after having a phone conversation with German Chancellor Angela Merkel, condemned these measures, uh, saying that this is not the right way to act uh, in order to uh, stop this virus, to make a mutual effort um, to stop this virus. And it was reiterated in a press conference here in Brussels, where the spokesperson of the European Commission also made clear that the um, individual closing of national borders is not something the Commission regards as helpful, seeing that the virus has already spread to all of the EU's member states. And that although, as Bernd Rieger has pointed out, there are currently no traffic jams, this is something one wants to avoid. One wants the supply chains for medical goods and for food to remain intact. Kerik, what is this disagreement about border closures? Tell us about uh, European unity on this crisis. The spokesperson of the Commission made clear that this is a, 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 a mobile situation now, something uh, they haven't uh, seen so far. So he didn't want to say that there is disunity on that aspect. There, there is movement. The interior ministers are, for instance, uh, debating now whether the closure of external borders would be an option. That is something we heard from the office of uh, President Macron, that within the next couple of hours, the external borders of the European Union uh, could be closed and that could be an effort in order to protect the internal market and to make sure that the medical goods and the food supply remain uh, for those people who are um, mostly need them. All right, DW correspondent Georg Matas reporting for us there from Brussels. Thank you very much. As Germany moves to close its borders to the rest of Europe, daily life inside the country is grinding to a halt. Across the nation, schools, restaurants, churches, many other social spaces have been closed or restricted. Here's how Germans have been dealing with the disruption. An eerie silence has descended over this Munich secondary school, just one of thousands of schools and kindergartens across Germany, which are closed from today until at least the middle of April. In Bavaria, further drastic measures were introduced on Monday to slow down the spread of the virus. At a press conference, which journalists could only follow via video link, the Bavarian Premier announced a state of emergency in his region. The university hospitals are asking medical students to make themselves available to assist permanent staff. Retired doctors and doctors on parental leave will be asked to come in as well. Bavaria has also ordered the closure of cinemas, theatres and clubs. Restaurants and cafes can only stay open until 3 p.m. But banks, pharmacies and supermarkets are so far exempt from restrictions. We don't see any reason for concern at this time, but everyone should be responsible about what they really need. And everything will be done to ensure that supplies are available. The Robert Koch Institute, the German government's main medical advisor, said it was important to implement tough measures now because the number of coronavirus cases continues to rise sharply. It's not sensible instead of going to a club to invite people back to your home or to go to other parties where a lot of people come together. I'm saying this because apparently some people have held so-called corona parties after clubs were closed. Please do not do this. Berlin's legendary nightlife has also been cut back massively. Clubs have closed, bars that are open are almost empty.
I don't have any customers. I've got a man on the door making sure that no more than 49 people come in. Then we have to close. We can't let in any more, but no more than are not coming. That is the situation now, but new rules might be announced any day. Even churches have been closed for fear of spreading the virus, but that doesn't mean that those who rely on others will be left to fend for themselves. I have asked our pastors to make sure they continue intensive contact with people who are afraid, above all the old and the sick. We will continue to seek these people out. Germany's response to the virus is a mixture of coming together in solidarity and battening down the hatches and hoping that those measures have the desired effect.